hello guys welcome once more to another video in our youtube channel so in this video we are going to be looking at the marking guide of june 2022 biology paper 3 group 1 all right so if you're new to this channel make sure you subscribe for more content and turn on notifications because i'll be uploading um other videos as time proceeds all right so um here is group one okay i basically have made a marking guide the questions are there as well okay so question one for each of the eight specimens a to h provided we need to state the major group to which they belong the subgroup to which they belong and then we also give their scientific name or their common name using the columns we need to enter our answers so these are basically the spacements all right these are the spacements that came in group one of 2022 so we have hibiscus flower we have the bird we have like podium we have the pine with cones we have neris we have crayfish we have bean plants and we have the starfish so basically here is it with the phylum and the class of each of these um each of these spacements so let's go to question two you see i've given you guys a mark allocation is one third times 24 because there are 24 things you have to fill and one is one divided by three so the table is eight marks now question a how are spacemen b which is the bird and crayfish adapted for locomotion so that is it i give I give like um how many how many um six adaptations of the bed to locomotion the four limbs are modified into wings used for flight the two legs to support the body and used for walking it has a streamlined shape making it possible for easy flight without obstruction it has a powerful pectoral muscles for which operate the wings and so on and so forth now adaptation of the crayfish for movement you have the swimmerets, which are fedri structures used for swimming, paddle like europod for swimming, five pairs of legs for walking. They also have telson for swimming movement. Now, question B How does the reproductive structure of lycopodium differ from that of the bean plant? So, here yeah, I'm comparing their reproductive structures, the differences between their reproductive structures. So, lycopodium. It's made up of sporophylls containing spores. Why that for bean plant, sporophylls and spores are absent. For lycopodium, the spores are dispersed by wind. For the bean plant, since it's an angiosperm, we have pollen grains are dispersed by insects. Now, for this other guy, anteridium and archegonium are present and absent in the bean plants. Stroboli containing spores are present like opodium, but for the bean plants, we have the anthers that contains the pollen grains. Now, there are no pollen grains in the bean plant, but there are pollen grains in. There are no pollen grains in lycopodium, but there are pollen grains in the bean plant. Automatically, the absence of ovary and ovules for lycopodium are present in the bean plant. Alright, question 2a, Roman 1. Where will you find specimen e which is a nerys specimen f which is crayfish and h which is starfish all of them are found in marijuana all right okay now how do they fit how do those specimens fit so basically nerys i gave two ways of feeding crayfish i gave two ways of feeding and the starfish i also gave two ways of feeding okay now using a hand lens make a large drawing to show the head region of specimen e specimen e was actually the nerys and then annotate three features to show their functions in the life of this organism so make sure you do that the diagram is one mark um the labeling is you need to label so one labeling is two marks so the labeling will be one labeling is half so two labeling is two marks then annotations Make sure you annotate on the diagram. An annotation simply involves giving a brief description, the function of the parts. All right. Um, so I decided to give four different parts and their functions. 
we have the parapodia extensions for swimming and gaseous exchange we have the simple eyes small and round for sensitive sensitive to light we have the jaw which is bony and hard for seizing prey and we have the tentacles which is slender and sensitive to touch now what do specimen e which is a nervous and crayfish have in common that's your you're now giving their their similarities all right they both have segmented bodies they have a bilateral symmetry they have eyes for vision they have organs used for feeling that is the antennas in crayfish and the tentacles in nervous now we need to also give tabulate their differences so nervous they have no pincers but crayfish they do have pincers the nervous they have tentacles for feeling while the crayfish have antennas for feeling the nervous they have um, parapodia for swimming while crayfish have swimmerets for swimming Europods absent in nervous and present in crayfish telson um absent in nervous and present in crayfish and the body covered by moist cortical in nervous white crayfish body covered by a hard exoskeleton okay now question three is dissection all right pin the bed provided on its back on a dissecting board get through the muzzle wall into the periphery perivisical cavity to display the respiratory the circulatory and the urinogenital organs in the space provided below make a fully labeled diagram of your dissection so dissection quality if it is good is three marks if it's average is two marks if it's poor is one mark is very poor is zero dissection accuracy if it's accurate is two marks fairly accurate one mark inaccurate zero the drawing quality the same thing if it's good is three marks if it's average is two marks if it is poor it's one mark and it is very poor it is zero now we need to label the trachea the bronchus the lungs the auricles the ventricles the kidneys the cloaca the adrenal gland the testes the ovaries the oviduct and the ureter because we are displaying the respiratory the circulatory and the urinogenital organs okay so everything worth five marks for that now you need to annotate as well and i've given you now question b make annotations to indicate the role of any three respiratory and three urinogenital structures so for respiratory we have the lungs which is large and spongy with air spaces for respiration we have the trachea tube-like structure with rings of cartilage for the passage of air to the lungs and the bronchi and the cut end of the ribs that is for the respiratory structures now for the urinogenital structures, you can talk about the kidneys, the ureter, the cloaca. Now, if it's for a female, we talk about the ovary, the left oviduct, and the cloaca. So you need to identify if the the bird given to you is a male or a female. Okay. So here is it. Um, I think that's for the urinogenital, right? Yes, that's the urinogenital. Now Question 4 is the experiment that came in 2022 was osmosis. Also, the experiment that came in 2022 was also osmosis. So, I don't know what experiment will come in 2024. But if you have not written yet, make sure you verify from those who have written already to know the experiment that came. Alright. So, osmosis is the movement of water molecules from a dilute to a more concentrated solution through a selective permeable membrane. Now, first question, you are provided with an Irish potato tubers and you have two solutions. From solution Y, we have to prepare 25% dilute solution Y1. Then you investigate the effect of immersing strips of potato tissues in solution X, Y, and Y1 using only the materials provided in your procedure. Then you write a concise report on your experiment as follows. So basically, um here is my report first of all we begin with the aim the aim is to investigate the effect of solutions x y and y1 on the strips of irish potato tissues now you should note that solution x is tap water yes solution y is concentrated salt solution and solution y1 as given in the equation is 25 percent of solution y all right of dilute solution y specifically so I gave a hint to prepare 25% of dilute solution Y, which is solution Y1. Um, the working volume chosen was 10 cm cube. So you need to take 25% of 10 cm cube gives us 2.5 cm cube. So 2.5 cm cube of solution Y is taken. 
and then 7.5 cm cube of water and then added to make 25% dilution. Now we call it Y1. So again, we need to prepare 25% dilute solution Y1. All right. And that is from solution Y. So um, the, the, the volume of solution Y is 10 cm cube. Okay. And if you take 25% of that 10 cm cube, it gives you 2.5 cm cube. Now, since we need to prepare a dilute solution, then we need to introduce um, 10 7.5 cm cube of, of water so that 2.5 cm cube and 7.5 cm cube we add up to give you 10 cm cube. Okay, now what are we required to do? Procedure first thing the Irish potato tubers are washed with the tap water, they are peeled using a knife. Then the tubers are cut with a knife and the length of uh, 4 cm by 2 mm by 2 mm, measure using the ruler. Then those solutions are put in test tubes and labeled. The tubers are blotted using a tissue paper and then immersed in those TV solutions separately. Then we, 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 we allow that for 30 minutes and we observe. And it does not mean that when you allow for 30 minutes, you will not be doing anything in 30 minutes. No. You you you'll be doing something else in 30 minutes. Okay. Now these are the results. Now let's go to the solution. So we have X, Y, and we have Y1. Okay. X is tap water. So for my results, I will talk about the texture before and after. I will also record the length. Okay, and I know that my time is 30 minutes. So when I when I put those um when I put the potato strips inside tap water before the pot the potato strips are, are actually turgid, right? And after they are more turgid. Now, why? Tell me in the comment section. Why is it that when you put the potato strips in tap water before they are turgid and after they are more turgid? Now, the original length of the potato strip you have four centimeters. Okay. Now, the final length. We need to measure the final length after putting it in tap water. So after the 30 minutes, we use the ruler again and measure the final length. It will give us a bon kind of 4.2 centimeters. There's an increase in length. So the difference in length is 0 0.2 centimeters. Now, when you put those potato strips in solution Y, which is a saturated salt solution, you know what salt does? You guys know what, what in fact, potato itself, right? Whenever you put Whenever I put potato into, whenever I put salt in potato, the salt drags out the water. All right. So think about osmosis, movement of water molecules from somewhere to somewhere via a selective permeable membrane. So initially, the potato strips are turgid. Then after, they become softer. That one is clear because they have loose water. Right. So basically, their original length will decrease. So initial length is 4 centimeters. Final length is 3.8, so the difference is negative. Now, when I dilute solution Y, all right, when I in my solution Y is a dilute solution of of my solution Y1 is 25% dilute solution of my solution Y. So the texture initially is turgid and after it is soft. Okay, it is soft because I diluted that salt solution, 25% dilution. So it's not going to be if I'm using softer for Y, then I cannot say softer again here. I'll say soft because the amount of water loss is not as compared to when it is just a pure saturated salt solution. So you see the final length is almost as the same as the final length of the solution Y, but this time around is 3.9 and the difference in length is negative 0.1. Alright. Now comment on the result. So clearly, solution X is a hypotonic solution. Water. More water molecules to the cell content of the tuber which is hypertonic less water molecules thus then water was therefore entering in by osmosis thus the cell content became turgid leading to an overall increase in length right because um this time around we are moving the the originally solution x is just water i know water is hypertonic hypotonic sorry yes it contains more water content than the potato so definitely that's what's going to happen. Now, um, for solution Y is hypertonic, right? So the cell content of the of the of the potato tubers. So water is 
basically going to be leaving the potato tuber by osmosis because water will leave a region of higher concentration water molecules to a region of lower concentration lower concentration is a salt higher concentration is a potato tuber so there will be a, a decrease in length the tuber will become flaccid and softer and will be a decrease in length by 0.2 centimeters all right and solution y same story water is also hypotonic because it was a dilution but it is less hypo high it's less hypertonic as compared to y okay now the graph we plot the graph of the change in length of the tubers against the time so after 10 minutes after 20 minutes after 30 minutes 40 minutes and so on and so forth we have the change in length so that's the scale of the graph okay now what about the conclusion there is a net movement there is a net movement in all the three strips showing that osmosis takes place in living tissues through the semi permeable cell membrane now suggesting a control experiment to confirm the validity of your result so which control experiment can we use i just gave a little procedure one of the potato tubers was spewed using a knife equal dimensions as those mentioned above were actually cut the potato tuber was boiled in water bath provided in water bath provided for two minutes the tuber was blotted and immersed in solution x now it was allowed to stand for 30 minutes there will be no change in the length of the potato tuber and because they, they when when you when when you 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 kind of boiled the potato tuber in the water bath all the cells were killed okay so osmosis can only take place in living tissues that's a control experiment that's just to show that osmosis takes place only in living tissues all right so stay tuned for um group one no this group one stay tuned for group two